Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at how to write names and formulas for basic ionic compounds. In a later video we'll take a look at how to deal with polyatomic ions. In this one we're just going to we're just going to analyze monatomic ions, which means basically one metal with one nonmetal, single atom. Okay, the first thing we want to do is identify the metal, which is first. That's always going to be our positive ion. And then nonmetal, which is second, that's always going to be our negative ion. Okay, this is the cation, this is the anion. Those are other words for positive and negative ions. Now, you have a periodic table where you can look up a lot of these charges. Silver is not one you would necessarily know off the top of your head. So you flip over on the back of your periodic table and you look up and find that silver is a plus one ion. That means it's going to lose one electron. Each atom wants to lose one electron. Oxygen, which is where oxide ion comes from, that's going to make a negative two charge. Okay, its oxidation number is negative two, which means it wants to gain two electrons. Well. Silver only wants to give up one electron, but oxygen wants to gain two. And they would both like to try to form a compound that allows them to be neutral, overall zero. So in this case, we're gonna need more than one silver ion. If we have two silver ions, okay, if we have two of those there, that's what this little subscript means. It means there's two silver ions. Each one of them gives up one electron to become that ion. And both of those electrons get stolen and taken by the oxide. We only need one of those. So basically, a one, two to one ratio is how these things will form in nature when they come close to each other. Now we don't write it as two to one. We basically take these ones and we know they're there. We just don't write them. So if there's nothing there, we assume there's a one. We also don't write the charges. They're there to help us figure it out, but the final result is gonna be two silver atoms to one oxygen atom would make this compound. So I would look up silver and find that it's Ag, and there's two of those. Oxide is oxygen. And there's only one of those, this is the correct formula for silver oxide. Notice all we include is the number of each atom that has to be there for a neutral compound to be formed. Okay, if we take a look at magnesium bromide, let's take the same approach. Magnesium, if we look it up, has a positive two charge when it becomes an ion. It means it loses two electrons, but bromide has a negative one. Okay, this time we're gonna need more bromide ions to balance out one magnesium ion. So we're gonna need twice as many bromides. Now those of you who are noticing some numbers already can see that all we do is if these numbers don't cancel each other out, they don't make zero, then all we do is cross the numbers like this. And that gives us the ratio, one magnesium to two bromides. Now let's write that as an actual formula. Magnesium is Mg, bromide is Br. But I need two of those for every one magnesium. We just don't write the one on the magnesium, it's there without writing anything, we just assume that's what it is. There's magnesium bromide. Now, when you get a transition metal, some transition metals have more than one possible ion they can form. So this one is telling us which one we're dealing with. That's a Roman numeral three. That means iron is going to be the plus three charge. That's the form of the ion that's gonna form you, that's gonna be uh, used here in this compound. And we look up sulfide, and sulfide is a minus two. Now those don't make zero, okay? So what we really need is iron, the total of the iron atoms, iron ions, to be positive six, and the total of the sulfides to be negative six. Two and three both go into six. But the quick and easy way to do this is just to say, all right, we need two of these and three of those. Now, in the formula, we don't need to write the Roman numeral. It doesn't include in there because these numbers inherently have that relationship involved. So I'm just gonna write iron as Fe, there's two of them, Sulfide is S, and there's three of them. Now that is iron three sulfide. We don't have to put the Roman numeral uh, in the formula because the charges and the amount that are there actually tell us that information. But in the name, it's, re it's required because you don't know which form of iron we're dealing with, and there's no numbers there in the name that tell you that. That's why the Roman numerals exist. Okay, the last one we'll take a look at here is lead four oxide. Now that means lead is a plus four. Oxide, we look at as a minus two. And if you're just doing your shortcuts, you would say, oh, two of these, four of those. But this one happens to be a rare situation where uh, these numbers reduce. And that's not the smallest whole number combination that will make zero. Okay, two leads and four oxygens will definitely make zero. But what if I just had one of these and two of those? That'd be positive four and negative four. See how two goes into four twice? This actually reduces to one lead and two oxygens. 
So if it's possible to simplify this down to a smaller whole number set, we do that. There's lead four oxide. And it's weird that Roman numeral four is in the name, but you don't see a four anywhere here in the formula. Okay, because it's referring to the charge, not how many are there. So that's going from names to formulas. Now let's take a look at the other option we have. Okay? Let's go back the other way. Here's some formulas. We want to name those. All we're going to do is we're going to name the positive ion, and then we're going to name the negative ion. Remember, the negative ion is that element's name, but we just change it to IDE. By putting IDE on there, we're signifying that these two things have traded electrons and have bonded physically attached together. So the K represents potassium. I'll write this underneath. And BR represents bromine. But I'm going to change it to bromide. If I just wrote potassium bromine, what I'm really saying in chemistry terms is I have separate potassium and separate bromine, and the two of them are not attached. By saying potassium bromide, we have said potassium lost one electron, bromide took that electron, now they attract to each other and they stick together, and they are one compound now. It's something new. That's why the IDE must be there. It signifies that they have attached to each other. Okay, if we look up aluminum, okay, aluminum, there's two of them, oxygen, there's three of them, but that comes from these charges, okay? It's the only way aluminum and oxygen will combine together. So we just name this aluminum, and then oxygen becomes oxide. There is no other formula for aluminum oxide, so we don't need to name it any, with anything else. Now this is a special case. We have to recognize these. Copper is one of those transition metals, kind of like iron and kind of like lead, that has more than one possibility. It's got more than one charge. Okay, so we have to kind of inherently figure out what that charge is. This two is kind of deceptive. So I'm going to look at the, the anion, the negative ion that's attached to sulfur. The sulfide ion has a negative two charge. Okay? Well, if there's two copper ions that are somehow going to balance this out, it must mean that copper was a plus one. Now, the only other way I can look at this is there's really a one in front of, of sulfur. I can go ahead and move that one right here and that two right there. I'm kind of basically doing the reverse of this, and it tells me that copper is a plus one. This is important because the plus one must go in the name to say which form of copper it is, because that's the only way you would know. The numbers, the other numbers aren't involved in the name. So we would call this copper one sulfide. And once you get the hang of this, it's fairly, um, it's fairly easy to follow. However, you need to watch out for these, which only occur on a handful of these transition metals we're gonna be working with. Okay, does it have more than one charge or not? So you have to watch for that. If it does not have more than one charge, then we never include a Roman numeral, because there's only one way it's gonna form with something else. The other thing you have to watch out for is that you always change it to IDE to signify that these things have chemically attached. 